Heens Che, and uh, good morning, everybody. So, I um, I got a special request from uh, Sinju Gator. Um, comments on a couple of videos regarding, um, you know, a request to make a video about the skin color of natives, particularly mixed bloods, because um, Sinju Gator's been basically, yeah, has, has, has had people say, oh, you're not really native because of, you know, skin color. So I've had a little bit of that myself. I've had, I've had kind of a mixed, um, no pun intended, uh, sort of mixed results when it comes to that. I've had people look at me and, not, and just assume that I'm white. But then when they find out I'm native, they look at my face. They're like, oh, holy crap. Yeah, you, are, you do look native. So it's, um, I mean, it, it helps having long hair like I do. But my, my long hair is also like a chestnut brown color, like a reddish chestnut brown. So, which is kind of like, you know, a little more on the celtic -y type of, of racial thing. But at the same time, I mean, you know, my mom, I mean, she's mixed blood too, but, um, you've got, you've got reddish black hair among natives as well. So in all honesty, some of the reddishness, some of the highlights may not totally be Celtic. Some of them might actually be, might actually be some of my native blood. So <clears throat> It's funny how that works because my, my dad had the kind of the same hair color as me, maybe not quite as reddish, kind of, but, um, I always remember his hair being black and he was white. He was a total white dude. So like, um, my mom definitely naturally has black hair. And so that kind of made her look more native because she has actual black hair. But again, she gets, she gets the reddish highlights. Now she's salt and pepper. So, um, my great grandmother was legally a full blood. She looked like a full blood. If you look at pictures of her, she looked like she was full blooded Muskogee Indian. And for all intents and purposes, she might as well have been. Like all of her grandparents um, were Creek Indian by blood and they all had like a tribal town. So um, they probably all had clans. And at that point, it's like you might as well be a full blood. If all, of, if all four of her grandparents have clans and tribal towns, you, you pretty much might as well be a full blood. Um, because all the cultural like check marks are pretty much there. I mean, even if just both your parents, not even all of your grandparents, but both your parents, meaning both grandmothers have clans, then like y you might as well be a full blood. You know, really when you think about the ceremonial aspect, when you think about the traditional, like how, how do you acquire a name? How do you acquire your citizenship? Um, you know, how do you relate to the relatives on both sides of the family as far as like uh, clan roles and things like that? So, but that's a whole different topic. I've, de I've delved into the, much of that before, but there's still more that could be delved into, but uh, not in this video. Um, <clears throat> so my great grandmother was like at least three quarters, you know, Creek, well, native, because she had some Yuchi as well. But she had on her dad's side some, like her dad was technically a mixed blood. Like his grandfather, his paternal grandfather was actually from Scotland. And that guy's father-in-law was Chief Benjamin Perryman, whose dad was white. Then, his, then my great great grandfather's mother was also uh, a marshal, and her mother was a barnet. She was Yuchi, probably related to, to, to Timothy Barnett, aka Timpuchi Barnard. I don't know how she's related to him. Could have been a niece. Could have been a daughter. I got no clue. Um, all I know is that she's related to the Barnett family, who, you know, from the Yuchi tribe who had long since joined the Creek Nation. This is according to the Chronicles of Oklahoma. So, <clears throat> well, here's the thing. You look at some of these famous chiefs that were half white and most of their portraits portray them as being mostly native looking in their appearance, maybe even totally native looking in their appearance. Um, as far as you can tell, mainly because of skin color and, and with enough indigenous features coupled with skin color to make you th think, oh, this person's a full blood. So you get full bloods today who are looking at these portraits going, yeah, these are the full bloods. These are our, our, our ancestors, right? Benjamin Perryman looked like a full blood according to his portrait, but his daddy was white. And that's an historical fact. So no amount of tradition, oral tradition, and my grandparents told me this is going to change any of that. And I've had um, relatives, like mutual descendants uh, of Chief Perryman say like, oh yeah, um, oh, this ancestor of mine was a full blood. I'm like, yeah, no, they weren't. Their last name was Hodge. That was a white dude who married into like the Perryman family, or a white dude who married into the McKellop family, which is descended from the Perryman family on the mother's side. Okay. So, I mean, 
technically you have less creek blood than you think you do. So, but anyways, my great grandma definitely looked like a full blood. She had all of the identifying features, like in a very, very big way. And on her mother's side, like her mother was also really dark and, and looked incredibly Indian. So, I mean, and those would have been like more of the Upper Creek full bloods. Whereas on the, um, although there, there could have been, as I mentioned in my video, like a Sawakalo tribal town, which is a lower Creek town. That is also probably part of my blood on, on that side. But you get into like my great, great grandfather's side again, like he's got the mixed blood. He's got like Coweta, you know, Yuchi town, big spring. He's got these like lower Creek towns, but apparently some of them were actually not necessarily like all Confederate Creeks either. Some of them were actually like lo loyal Creeks. It's kind of surprised my last videos I'm, as I'm filming and I'm realizing some of this stuff because I hadn't looked at that document in a while. Anyways, <clears throat> so you get my great grandma, right? Looks totally full blood. Mary's a white guy. Her kids are really like a, like a toss up between being more Indian looking and being more white. Like my great, my great uncle Joe Mack, I, he looked very native. You look at his pictures of him, not just in the Marine Corps with his shirt off, holding his gun, uh, but also like when he's older and he puts on a bunch of weight, he looks like a giant grape with a big smile on his face. Like he, he, he was very round at that point. There's a picture of him with his wife where after he lost a ton of weight, they're, they're both wearing the same pair of pants that he previously wore when he was super fat. It's a funny picture. Like it's, it's, it shows the sense of humor of some of the folks in, in my mom's side of the family. And Joe Mack, from what I hear was, he was a funny guy and he was a really, um, a really nice guy too. So uh, it's, you look at the smile on his face and it's just like this, this guy, he's somebody you'd probably want to meet and hang out with and, and, uh, just have a good old time with. But, um, so yeah, and then he was really close to my grandma. They were like inseparable for a while. She had very white looking skin because of her dad, but she had very native features in her face. And, um, you know, then she married my grandfather whose daddy was white and whose mom was supposedly half Cherokee. I say supposedly because I'm, I still have yet to find actual like proof of that. But I look at pictures of her and I'm like, yeah, she doesn't look totally white. She, cause like on, on census records, they'll say, oh yeah, uh, race white. And then her son, my grandfather says like race, white, color, dark. You look at pictures of him as a young man. He's kind of, he's, he's pretty swarthy looking. He's a good looking dude. But then you see him as an older man and he looks like crap cause he got in too many bar fights while he was drunk, lost his teeth cause he, you know, it's a tad sad tale. You see a picture of him with his brother, Jack, who also looked swarthy in his youth but you see him as an old man and they both look like they're mexicans like dark mexicans they don't look like they're white people like they're definitely not totally white i mean there's definitely native blood on that side i just have yet to connect that uh through documentation uh their mother had a european last name nichols so <clears throat> whether that came from her dad or from her mom i don't know because i don't know who her dad is i know who i know who her mom is i know who her stepdad is and her sibling, her brother that I had, Virgil that I had heard of, that was her younger half-brother. That wasn't her full brother. So I had to find all this stuff out through census records. So anyways, there's a lot of uh, information you could find when, you're, when you dig hard enough. Ancestry did kind of help out with that. But um, as far as like verifying any Indian blood on that side, I, I can't right now because I just can't. Um. There are times where people that were Indian actually were racially labeled as being white. And there's times where they wanted to be labeled as white because it was better than being labeled black, which would have been the other option. And, um, and nobody, you know, you don't want to be black back then. Okay. But you also don't want to be Indian back then in some cases because, uh, you know, or, or be a breed as they called us back in those days where you're mixed blood. <clears throat> Cause sometimes neither side wanted you. Okay. It really kind of depended because I mean, Cree Nation's been mixed blood for a long time and we've accepted our children for the most part. And, um, but anyways, I should say our, our mixed blooded progeny, you know, grandchildren and whatnot. Um, so yeah, you, you've got all that going on, but yeah, you got to, uh, just got to do some research. So yeah, but you look at my, my grandmother and her siblings and it's like, she had light complexion. 
her brother Joe Mack had dark complexion. Her brother Pat was kind of more on the light side. Like, he definitely took more after his daddy's side. Robert definitely had an Indian look about him, although he didn't, he wasn't super brown. He was kind of brown. Uh, but he definitely had, like, his face was definitely you know, Indian features <clears throat> uh, for the most part. Like, he resembled his dad's people as well, but he definitely took more. Like, you can see a very strong uh, strand of native blood in him. So, and there's pictures of me where I look like him. And there's also pictures <laughs> of my son as a baby, because he's still a little guy, but where he looks like my great uncle Robert as a baby. It's, it's really weird how that happens. It's very bizarre. But, um, so yeah. <clears throat> and that's the thing. So, I mean, look at, look at family pictures. Go back generations and look at the family pictures. Look at who was supposedly like a full blood or half blood or whatever. And compare their pictures to yours and to your children. You're going to be like, wow, uh, my kid looks like them back then. That's how many generations? That's three generations ago. That's like a sibling of my grandmother. Okay. So that's like my son's great grandmother's sibling that he looks like as a baby. So, <clears throat> so, um, it's weird. So my mom, because her dad was darker than his wife, who was supposedly more Indian than him, makes you wonder if my great grandmother, my mom's dad's side was actually really a, like maybe mostly Cherokee or something like that, or, or some other Indian blood that, that we're unaware of. Um, but that's a topic for a different video. I need to actually do some more research and kind of, you know, talk about that later. But, um, but yeah, it makes you wonder, but he, but look, my uncle, my mom's brother, uh, my late, her, her late brother, he did look, he had certain traits that resembled his paternal grandfather. So I'm not going to be like, oh, well, maybe my grandpa wasn't really the son of his dad. Yeah, he was. And, um, and his brother, Jack, who's just as dark as him, maybe even darker, had more of their dad's features, uh, particularly the wiry hair, that wiry Irish hair. Okay. But it was dark, more Indian colored. Okay. So <clears throat> their dad had like red hair, apparently. So, uh, you look at a picture of him, he looks like some old Irish guy. It's pretty funny actually. But, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, there's no question about the paternity being correct. So what about the maternity? Like how much Indian blood is there on, on their mom's side? I'm really curious. But anyways, it's hard to ascertain because uh, I don't have enough information. But uh, suffice to say, my mom was actually darker than her dad. I'm sorry, than her mom. My mom was darker than her mom. Uh, my mom, so she had more of a swarthy look in her youth and as a, as a young woman, I remember mom being actually a little bit darker than she is now. She's spent so much time out of the sun now that her skin kind of has turned light. And I've seen full bloods, full bloods that, uh, in Oklahoma that are, have a weird, like, I don't want to say a sallow complexion kind of, it's like where they they got kind of like a lightish brown color, but, or a darkish white color, you know, it's, it could be due to some medical condition. Probably I think it has more to do with age to be honest, uh, age rather than intermixing, um, maybe some sickness rather than age. I don't know, but there, there's some, something going on with some of these supposed full bloods that where they're lighter than other full bloods and other half bloods. I've got, you know, a couple of friends who are half bloods who look like full bloods. They very, very much look like full bloods, but their daddy was white. Okay. So you cannot tell that by looking at them at all. Okay, I got another friend who's like, um, her dad's from Peru, very indigenous looking. Mom, very, very white looking. The girls, all the kids, very indigenous looking. Like the, the Peruvian took over. So um, you got my wife, very, very indigenous looking Colombian. But technically they also have Spaniard blood. Her, her brother tends to take a little more after that in, in terms of skin color. But then she has like si younger siblings that were hit or miss. And I'm talking full siblings. She has an older half sibling, a couple older half siblings, and also a younger half sibling. Um, if you take just the full siblings alone, you get variation within them. But it's obvious that they're all full siblings when you compare pictures of their parents and they compare pictures of the children and things like that. It's just, it's, it's very interesting how genetics works. But um, my, my wife definitely has a lot of indigenous blood. She has to. 
She just has to, to have the face and, and the skin color that she has. There's no way around that. Then you got my son. Way lighter than she is because of my blood. And, you know, my dad being completely 100% white. Okay, like, uh, you have to go back to, like, like early medieval Spain to find some, like, Moorish blood that makes him to the Spanish royal family. And, um, or to go back to find Genghis Khan's blood mixing with the Europeans and eventually producing European royalty that descends in a female line from Genghis Khan. You have to go really far back on my dad's side to find anything that isn't white. Okay? Really, literally 800 years, something like that. I mean... Is French blood, I can't really say, you know, how far back I can trace, trace that, but they were, they were pretty white too, uh, um, his French ancestry. So <clears throat> it's, my dad was for all intents purposes, like as white as you're ever going to find. So yeah, blue eyes. My mom wanted us to have blue eyes. You know, he promised that he couldn't, he couldn't live up to that. Um, <clears throat> only my older half siblings have that. So, um, yeah, it's funny how life works. But anyways, um, yeah, th there's, so you see my little widow's peak type of thing. This has kind of come and gone over the years. My great grandma had that. And from when I was younger, it was more flat, but then there'd be like an indentation that went up like that. And that kind of goes back to her and her mom, except they had, they had a stronger one where kind of like it actually did this and then did that. For me, it just went up on one side. And I looked at some of these, uh, the Mexican kids I went to school with. And I'm like, oh, they, they, he's got that. Okay, he's, he's got to have some Indian blood, you know? So as I got older, my hair started growing further down. I'm not going to go bald naturally. It's just never going to happen. Um, natives, like I would say full blood natives don't have this kind of facial hair. They also don't have a lot of body hair, except when they're on the top of their head, which really doesn't go bald unless they get diabetes. That's the way it is. Uh, George Tiger, I don't care. I don't care that he's legally a full blood. He's bald. He's got male pattern baldness. He's got, he's got white or black blood enough to make him bald. He is not a full blood. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to the Tiger family. If you're immediately related to George Tiger and you think you're a full blood, you're not. Because he's not. I guarantee it. So <clears throat> as soon as I saw his face and it said full blood on the, on the ballots and the Muscogee Nation news, I'm like, he's not a full blood. His face looks full blood. But his, his, this is not something. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. All due respect to him, even though I didn't vote for him, and I actually um, would have voted against him in the second uh, in his reelection had I actually had the chance to do so. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, so uh, I better. I'm, I'm parked at Target right now. I'm gonna start turn the car on in a minute here and start driving to work. I dropped my wife off and had a time to spare here but um but anyways um so yeah i have a co-worker um who's like mixed blooded black let's just say that he's mick he's black guy but he's got like he's got some white ancestry he's got some native ancestry he claims he has blackfoot which I, I i hear a lot from uh from black dudes it's kind of funny it's like oh yeah i'm a blackfoot it's like are you sure it's like white guys saying oh i'm a cherokee right <laughs> <laughs> and then all Cherokees having like basically, um, you know, white butts basically anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of become a meme. that's also kind of true. So as far as the Blackfoot with, uh, with, with black dudes, I don't know. It, you know, it's just kind of, kind of sounds funny after a while, but, um, at first he wasn't sure he's looking at me. And then like I showed him my, my, uh, tribal membership card. And he's like, oh, wow, oh, oh, you do have a lot of Indian, okay. And now he treats me like I'm, like I'm native. And it's like, okay, well, cool. But I mean, you know, um, I mean, I know some of the language. I know some of the, uh, I, I definitely know some of the history, maybe even a good amount of the history at this point. But uh, yeah, um, it was just kind of funny. So <laughs> the tune changed pretty fast. Once I flash that CDIB card, which is unfortunate because a lot of people will treat you like you're not really native unless you have proof that you're native, like especially if you're a mixed blood. They'll be like, oh, you're, you're really Indian. Uh, you, you got your uh, tribal citizenship card. It's like you got people who have native blood, like literally have native blood. They, have, they can trace it back genealogically. 
and what's gonna what happens is like they don't necessarily have recent enough ancestry in terms of history not not just talking percentage of blood but like you know as I mentioned this in the past like if you want to be part of the porch band of Creek Indians because you can't be part of Creek Nation because your your family stayed behind but you have ancestors on the Parson Abbott roll I, I mean you might be able to join the porch band of Creek Indians or the, the Florida, you know, Muskogee Nation of Florida, they're trying to get federal recognition. Same deal. They had the Parson Abbott role, but then their ancestors went to Florida and stayed in a specific area. So, like, if you don't have a, a ancestry back to a specific group of Creek Indians in recent times, like, your ancestry goes back even before the Parson Abbott role. Like, you're a descendant of, like, far-off warrior Hannah Hale, the descendants that, that stayed among the whites, then you may not be able to get tribal citizenship. But if you're if you're a descendant whose family has been a, 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 from that point still associated with the tribe, well then your family is going to be in the Parson Abbott role and you're going to be part of Creek Nation, um, you know. So, or or at least one of the branches of, of the Muskogee people. But but yeah. So but you're but if you are among the white people that are descended from Hannah Hale and Far Off Warrior, you might look super white. Like someone might look at you and say, "Oh no, you're a white dude." You might be very proud of your heritage, but you're, but you're still going to be looked at as a white dude. But if you flash that CDID card, it's another story. So, because then, then people automatically take you seriously once they see that you're a citizen, an actual citizen of an Indian tribe. But if they're looking just at your skin color, they might, they might not see you as Indian. So, and it's unfortunate, but it's also very true. So, um... So yeah, uh, well, what else was I going to say on the subject? Um, oh yeah, I and mean, it's funny because some people might actually have more native blood than white blood, but because there's been enough intermixing with white blood from an early enough time, the white traits kind of start to dominate, and you know that. Uh, <laughs> you don't look like a, like a three quarter blood anymore. You look like you're like seven eighths white basically, or maybe even totally white. So I got a friend who, who at least she claims that she, I mean, she says she's Cherokee and, and Choctaw. I believe she is both, but she told me she's that she's pretty much like three quarters native American. I'm like, really? I'm like, and she's like, yeah, but there's been so much intermixing early on. And I believe that I haven't looked at her, her pedigree chart. I'd be very curious to see that. Um, but she is very, very white looking. So if she has more native blood than me, uh, I mean, it's possible. I, I, I mean, I don't think she's full of crap, but at the same time, it's like, I mean, look, you know, again, my, my wife is very dark and I've got native blood, but my son looks very light. Like he's a little bit darker than me, but not much darker than me. It's like a very slight shade, more yellowy than, uh, than my skin tone. So, but it's like when he was born and when he was, you know, just a smaller kid, my wife would, uh, take him to take him with her to go pick up the boys from school. And people say, Oh, it's such a cute kid. All like all the Hispanic women would be like, Oh, it's such a cute kid. Are you babysitting him? <laughs> it's like, no, he's my son. Like, no, no, he's not your son. And Really? Just funny because he does resemble uh, the other boys, just lighter. He does resemble his mom's side of the family, only with lighter complexion. So, people look at the skin color, they don't always look at the features. Now granted, my wife's kids for the most part don't look like her specifically. They have, well my stepkids have her skin tone. What they don't have is her actual, like, literal face. But they do have a lot, like, most of their features come from that side of the family. So, it's just kind of the way it is. And my son is not totally different from that equation, although he definitely looks like me as well. Um, he also looks a lot like her side of the family. So, like, I remember going to the doctor once and, like, you know, she walks in and bring, brings my kid... And uh, this old couple, they see this boy, like, whoa, he looks just like you to me. And then they look at her, like, whoa, he looks just like you too. 
And it was weird. This is like an old white couple. The Hispanic uh, families were like, oh, 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 this is really your son? Like, because, because of the skin color difference. So it, it could really be hit or miss. I mean, my son is a, is a citizen of Crete Nation. And he's got more, he definitely has to have more indigenous blood than I do. But he's like almost to the same lightness. So it's, it's really funny how genetics works. Um, there's something else I was going to say on this before I close up. Um, sorry, now that I'm driving, I'm, I'm a little bit distracted, but yeah, you just never know sometimes, uh, genetics are hit or miss. Oh yeah. I was going to say this and here's the thing about it. Don't trust ancestry DNA. Ancestry DNA says that I'm 6% Native American or Indigenous Americans. I'd love to know how they figured that out. Okay, look, I mean, even if you count the white blood from that my great grandma had, I should still be about 10% Muskogee Indian at least. Okay, and then if you, you take the, um, seriously, I don't know if it's Cherokee or what it is, but there's definitely some indigenous blood on my grandfather's side. I, there has, there absolutely has to be. The, the family tradition has to be correct. I don't give a crap what, what ancestry DNA says. The problem is they also don't have a good enough, big enough pool of indigenous blood outside of like Hispanic countries. Like as far as tribes that are here in the States, some of whom may not be as closely related to each other as people want to think. Okay. Um, like for example, the Navajo and the Muscogee people are not the same blood. We're indigenous. We have certain indigenous features. Yes. But we've been isolated from each other enough to, to where we're not exactly the same. I mean, to be honest, Muscogee Creeks probably have more genetically in common with the Cherokee and the Mohawk than we do the, um, yeah, than we do the Navajo. I'd be willing to, to, to guess, okay? So, not all tribes look exactly the same. Not all of our DNA is going to look exactly the same. And then you've got some Navajo and some Apache and, and what other, like, mission Indians out there who might have a certain amount of Mexican and Spaniard blood that might be affecting the, um, the results of what native DNA is supposed to look like when they're gathering the data. It's kind of like, oh, you're full Irish. Well, that's because all of your great grand, your, your fourth great grandparents were born in Ireland and therefore you're legally considered like, like they, they say, okay, we're going to use this as the criteria by which we consider someone to be pure Irish or pure English or pure German, they're taking people currently in those countries, not people that have left those countries. There could be people outside those countries that might have more of the blood after being in America for, for like six or seven generations, because there's been so much other stuff mixing. Like the Tolkien family is actually of German origin. He was English. He was definitely an Anglophile when it came to his, his mythology and stuff, but he, his, his paternal lineage was German. Okay, there's other English families that are actually German because of the Hessians. Okay, because of like, you know, because, you know, Prince Albert brought some people with them and things like that. So England has been a melting pot for a while. There's no such thing as, as full-blooded anything when you think about it. So the results of using ancestry DNA, it's not going to be a perfect science like they want you to think. And then they're going to admit, oh, we have this, this and that wrong, but... Look at how much of this ancestry you got from from parent number one versus parent number two because they got to be woke, right? They can't say mom and dad anymore. Well, they said that all of my Irish DNA came from my dad's side, basically. And I'm like, no, no, I have double the Irish blood that my, my paternal half-siblings have. They've got like 12, 12.5%. I've got like 27%. How does that happen if, it all, if all of my Irish came from my dad's side? It doesn't. So... Um, I, I get really annoyed when I see how badly they screw things up. So don't really don't trust ancestry DNA. It's like I'm 2% Scottish and now I'm 0%. How does that happen? Oh, well, cause they're updating it all the time. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. I'm sorry. That 2% is probably my, my great, 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 great grandfather, David McKellop, who married chief Benjamin Perriman's daughter, because that's the most recent ancestor that came from Scotland. The other, but I have other Scottish blood too. That's the thing. But it's just been in the colonies longer than Dave McKellop was, right? So, 
Um, so yeah, uh, I have no doubt that I have more than 6% Native American. Stupid. I have no doubt that I have more than 10% Native American. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm annoyed by the ancestry results. It's, it's very misleading what they, uh, what they're trying to sell. 23 me might be more accurate, but they won't lower the prices on things. They, they don't give any holiday specials unless it's like a special on the entire package. It's like, oh, traits plus the other stuff. The plus other stuff they'll give you for free on the holidays, but the main package is still a consistent hundred bucks, and I don't want to pay that. I already paid Ancestry, and um, but Ancestry is good for, for verifying relatives that you connect to genealogically on paper. And I've verified that my uh, that, that I have so many relatives that are, in fact, my relatives, both through Creek Indian blood as well as through the various white bloods. And that's why I can say it's like my grandfather's father really was his father because there's a, a relative on, like, I, my great-grandfather's sister has a granddaughter that I'm connected to genetically, right? And things like that. A lot of that keeps happening to where it's like, okay, these women were all faithful to their husbands. None of the kids were adopted. It was all just normal, this guy married this woman and they produced this child. So, at least within the last, like, six to eight generations, it seems like that's the case. And so, connecting you to an actual relative, that's the part of Ancestry DNA that's accurate. But as far as, like, their conclusions about nationalities and things like that, they're not totally correct on that. And they want you to submit your information about your heritage as well. And then they're going to use that to update the algorithm. So, if I were to say, oh, I'm actually full-blooded Cherokee, or, or, or... or I'm like half Creek and a quarter Cherokee, or I'm three quarters Creek, an eighth Cherokee and an eighth Uchi. Uh, if I were to make up some numbers, that may possibly affect the algorithm. They might figure it out, but they might not. I, I wonder, okay? So uh, I have to double check this stuff, but yeah. Um, it also doesn't help that they don't use uh, like Y chromosome or mitochondrial haplotypes because my female lineage is Muscogee Indian. So I should have a haplotype uh, in my mitochondrial DNA that, that reflects that ancestry. But ancestry doesn't actually show you that. 23andMe does though. And that's why I will probably at some point end up using 23andMe. But anyways, um, DNA is not gonna connect you to a tribe unless you connect to a specific ancestor that's on the books. Like, probably a grandparent or a great-grandparent, or a parent, obviously. Um, If you can connect to someone specific through your DNA, then through that DNA, you can can gain citizenship in some tribes. But but if it just says, oh, you're part Muscogean or Iroquoian or, you know... Yudo Aztecan or something like that you're not going to get citizenship in a tribe it's not going to work like that so but that has nothing to do with skin color but I want to bring up the ancestry DNA part a little bit just because it was it's something that's been on my mind it's been very annoying to me but uh, I've had people usually people that are white look at me and say oh do you have some Native American blood or they when they see me after finding out that I do have Indian blood they're like Oh, yeah, I can tell. Now, now that you mention it, I can tell. So, I have bone structure and some facial features that reflect that. Having, Like I said, having long hair doesn't hurt. So, it, it does accentuate certain traits. But, uh, yeah. So, if people don't think you're native because of your skin color, but you have the genealogy to prove it, I mean... Again, don't worry too much about what the naysayers say. But if you, but as far as getting citizenship, as soon as you get citizenship in a tribe, then especially if you have like a, a federal CDIB card that has all of your different ancestry, all your different native uh, tribes listed on it, and, and like the total sum of your uh, of your native blood that's currently on record, people will take you seriously. All of a sudden, you're an Indian. So, you weren't an Indian before, but now you are. It's like, 
okay. <clears throat> if you know your family history, like you literally know your family history and you know for sure that these are Indians by blood, especially with documentation and, and, uh, and photographs of ancestors that, that were native and obviously look native. I mean, don't worry too much about what other people think. You kind of got to care to an extent, but, um, again, get yourself a tribal citizenship card or, or a federal CDIB. That's, that'll be your ticket to convincing people right away. So anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to be at work in about five or 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to get off the, uh, get off the internet for now. Let me know what you guys think. I hope this helps. If you got any other questions, uh, Sinzu Gator and, and uh, anybody else for that matter, uh, by all means, let me know. I hope this helps. Uh, gather all of your records that are relevant to your native ancestry and uh, <clears throat> submit that stuff because it's important. It is important that your native blood is recognized. And it's also important for your kids. And also, if you don't have any kids, if, you're, if you have siblings that have kids, or you got cousins and cousins that have kids and they're related to you through that same lineage. It's important that that, that, that genealogy is collected and that the native blood is legally recognized. Very, very important. So anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Bado.